Good evening, everyone. I'm so delighted you came through the rain to be here for what I think is easily the most dramatic service that we do all year long. I'm glad you're here as part of this important evening. Mm -hmm. Our opening hymn today is on page one in your bulletin. If you would all please stand and join our choir and sing. <laughs> the sacrament of his body and blood. Mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. 
and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This land shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and he began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. And Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, one who is bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he, knew, for he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should also do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and I sa as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Please pray with me. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A question for you to think about. What would you do on your last night on this earth? Think about that for a second. Imagine it's your final night of your life and you know it. This is it. No more tomorrow. Who would you want gathered around you? And I think if you could only give them one instruction, one last 
precious piece of advice before you died, what would it be? Today is Monday, Thursday. Jesus' last night to walk this earth before his crucifixion. The word Monday is derived from the Latin word for command and refers to the mandate that Jesus gives his disciples to love and to serve one another. If it helps you to remember, instead of Monday, you could think of it as Mandate Thursday. I will say this a lot in the next few minutes and days. I can't say this enough. Jesus mandates that all of his disciples love and serve one another. Plain and simple. But as usual, I'm getting ahead of the story. Jesus knows what's to come. He has always known that this would be his last night. He gathers these disciples and perhaps some other followers into the upper room of a house for one last meal together. And boy, is this an important moment. This, this, this last supper, as it's known, sets the precedent for every Eucharist you have ever celebrated. Every time you come to the rail to receive communion, you are following in the footsteps of this moment we're talking about. And during this meal, he does something radically unexpected. Of course, Jesus was always doing the unexpected. Y'all know that he was always acting differently than people thought a Messiah would act. And he associated with people that others found undesirable. Always hanging out with folks from the fringe of society. But this time, this evening, he really surprised those gathered by getting up during the meal, removing his outer robe, wrapping a towel around himself, and he begins to wash the feet of the people there. I want to give you a little background so you'll have context. Back in Jesus' time, Jerusalem was a dusty, dirty, dirty place. There was no trash pickup every week like we have in Bridgehampton. No sewers or even really street gutters. Animals were everywhere. The places people would walk would have been beyond filthy. Stinking waste of all sorts would have been just about everywhere you looked. And this is the mess that people walked in. Sandals were the shoes of the day, right? You know that. And many people were even too poor to afford those. So they're walking around barefoot in all this mess. Every home that could afford it would have had a basin with a pitcher full of water near the front door. Like we have a welcome mat by our doors today. It would have just been common decency to offer this. Something for the inhabitants and guests, you see, to wash their feet before they entered into the house. Feet were so filthy that by law, you could not compel your own slave to wash your feet for you. Think about that for a second. Feet were so dirty that they had written a law out of the kindness of their hearts for slaves. How ironic, right? That they didn't have to wash your dirty, stinking feet. That's dirty. So you can see how truly shocking this moment is. The leader of this group is about to do the lowest task that one could do for another person. Jesus' actions seem like an acted out version of some parable that he would tell. He is no longer to be with the disciples as their visible, physical leader. And now it is crucial 
that they understand who they are to be for each other and for everyone else in the world. Jesus was always the model of servanthood, and he demonstrated this attitude to his disciples here again in the washing of their feet. <coughs> now Peter, always fast to talk without thinking, Peter, must have been confused <coughs> seeing Jesus behave in this servile way. He still did not understand Jesus' teaching that to be a leader, one must also be a servant. That's still a great lesson for us today, isn't it? This can be such an uncomfortable passage for us as we consider how we treat others in this world. How we treat our neighbors near and far, the people we work with, the people from other religions, our political persuasions, even our own families. Now let me be clear. Jesus did not wash his disciples' feet just to get them to be nice to each other. <coughs> Instead, he wanted to extend his mission on earth after he was gone. The disciples were to move in the world serving God, serving each other. And let me repeat that. Let me change a noun to a pronoun. We are to move in the world serving God and serving each other. Folks, if Jesus is willing to serve us, we as his followers must also be willing to serve in any way, any way that glorifies God. We are in the world to be the servants of the love of God. And we have to ask ourselves, are we willing to follow Christ's example? Follow his mandate to love and to serve one another? Outside those doors, there is a world of hurt, of brokenness and loneliness out there, my friends. There are many people who need us in this world. Tonight, on this most holy of nights, as we remember all that Christ has given each and every one of us, and everyone we have ever known, I invite you to consider praying and asking God to reveal to you who he is calling you to serve. Amen.
We gather as the household of God, apostles, prophets, martyrs, and servants to pray for the church and all humankind, saying, Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. For refugees, for the homeless, and for all who have nowhere to lay their head, we pray. Come, Come Lord Jesus. Jesus. For those unable to eat at the Lord's table or at any other table, we pray. Come, Come Lord Jesus. Jesus. For the body of Christ, fractured in a world of violence and war, we pray. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. For those who betray and for those whom they betray, we pray. Come, Come Lord Jesus. Jesus. For all those in need, especially those commended to the prayers of this church family, we pray. Come, Come Lord Jesus. Jesus. For ourselves who gather to celebrate the Lord's Passover in the bread we eat and the cup we drink, we pray. Come, Lord Jesus. Now let us humbly confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we come to repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand up. Now. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please, everyone, have a seat. Delighted to have you here. This does kick off the big four, three and a half days for sure. Tomorrow at noon in this uh, spot, we will have Stations of the Cross. Been doing that for the last three years. This will be the fourth year. It's a very moving, quick service, 30 minutes. We move around this room, and I will have pictures put up all around the room of the 14 um, most poignant moments in Jesus's last day and we will move around the room and I will read um, a scripture from each one of those moments and we will say a brief prayer about that moment um, it's very moving um, uh, we don't sit down we're moving the, together all the way around the room so I invite you to that then at five o'clock is our good um, Friday service uh, and here we will have the passion play members of our church will be sharing um, uh, the story of Jesus's crucifixion, his trial. So um, I hope that you will be back here for that. Uh, we will share Eucharist. I will not be celebrating Eucharist. I'm making, I'm blessing enough tonight. Um, uh, and then we will carry it on and pass it out tomorrow. Then Saturday, very exciting on Saturday, um, uh, Abby Fleming will have decorated this room uh, in its usual uh, Easter glory. It'll be really special. Um, and we will be, <laughs> and we will literally be bringing the light of Christ back into the room. We will meet out front. It's supposed to be a dry on Saturday, thank goodness. We will light the Paschal uh, fire in a big fire pit. We will light the Paschal candle. You all will have candles in your hand. We will light them and we will come into a darkened church with the candles for the first part of the service. And that at a very dramatic moment, um, uh, the music will swell, the lights will come up, and it will be Easter. 
And then of course on Sunday, that's at five o'clock on Saturday. And on Sunday, we ha our times have shifted our services because the choir will be with us for both services, <laughs> nine o'clock and 11 o'clock. And there will be coffee hour in between um, uh, over in the parish house. Uh, the choir will need sustenance for sure after all that singing that they will be doing. So I hope that you will join us a lot. I will be here. Janet will be here. The choir will be here. We hope you will be too. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and sacrifice to God. service continues in your bulletin if you would all please stand as you were able the Lord be with you and also with you lift up your hearts we lift them to the Lord let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is right to give him thanks and praise it is truly right to glorify you father and to give you thanks for you alone are God living in truth dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven. We acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. <laughs> Thank you. 
proclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us the hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners, freedom, to the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. <coughs> After supper, he took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory and offering to you these gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we praise you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. And grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. And remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and life and grant that we may find our inheritance with all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our 
our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace.
continues with the post-communion prayer, which is found on page 13 in your bulletin. If you would all please kneel or stand as you are able. Let us pray. Eternal God, Eternal God Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Life is short, my friends, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make this journey with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind, for literally everyone you meet is fighting an unseen battle. I wish for you on this holiest of nights a blessing that will carry you through the year. All this I pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. And now, my friends, I invite you to sit back down while the stripping of the altar takes place. Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our ancestors trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm, and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth, and since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me. 
for trouble is near and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs are all around me. A company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far away. O oh, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion, from the horns of the wild oxen you have rescued me. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall all bow, all who go down to the dust. All who go down to the dust and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, yet unborn, saying that he has done.
invite you all to leave silently.